we have got Binance that's saying that in, thir- in 90 days we're going to res- basically ask like US participants to leave their exchange. We have Bittrex that has a Bittrex International and a Bittrex dom- domestic product. And we saw them last week announce 34 coins that are going to be removed from Bittrex. So here's what I want to get to the bottom of. One, why, which, why are they selecting certain tokens to remove first? Two, what's the deal with the fact that U.S. investors are going to be missing the IEO process? Because the IEO process is going to be a massive part of this industry. So like, how do we figure out a way to, to stay involved in that? And uh, three, are there other U.S. exchanges that we should be discussing that are giving us access to some of these smaller tokens and that are willing to stand up to U.S. regulators and not just fold like a cheap, cheap card table like these uh, exchanges that uh, we have now? And then maybe four, like is this restriction of U.S. dollars from going into certain tokens, the kiss of death for these tokens, and we should be avoiding them in our investments anyway? And five, does this help? Does this help Coinbase become more and more of an important, important firm in, in, you know, in crypto? So those are the topics. Anyone going to do them in any order? Have at them. What do you, what do you guys think? Like, where, where do U.S.-based hedge funds go from here? Matt, are people going to redomicile offshore? And if they do that, does that even, like, matter? Because, you know, at some point they're going to ask the question, do you have U.S. citizens in your fund? And we're not going to lie on any, any forms. So, like, what do we do if we want IEOs, if we want to use Binance still, if we want certain altcoins only on Binance? What do we do? Basically, it's not that big of a deal for funds in terms of because they're talking about regular individuals. I don't know about you guys, but everyone in our fund is an accredited investor. So basically, they're like a classified as they understand what they're doing with their money and they're responsible. So that's more tailored towards the regular individual um, on the exchange. That's who they're kind of kicking off. But from our side, I honestly think it's kind of in terms of there'll be a lack of liquidity, but. From our side, it kind of almost elimin- not, not so much eliminates competition, but it allows for us to basically get a better entry in terms of, I don't know how long y'all's approach is, but for the meantime, when they kind of, there's a gray area, that means there's kind of opportunity for us, especially when the retail investors aren't allowed. But I still think the majority of capital inflows is from Asia and crypto just being how big it is. So for, from a standpoint from your fund, our fund, my fund, uh, it shouldn't be that big of a problem in terms of getting in the deals. Yes, regular individuals from the U.S. aren't going to be allowed in the deals, but that is only a certain portion of basically the crypto market. I, you know, I'm going to chime in for a second because I do want people to think not only in terms of um, institutional money, but uh, in terms of um, – how this is going to affect um, the economy as a whole, I think this is just another step in the world detaching itself from the dollar. And the further down the road in breaking down our international monetary institutions and the further escalation in the normal alliances the United States has had economically, um, I think this is part of a larger, broader, multinational effort to devalue the dollar in a variety of different ways as this new asset class starts to emerge over the next decade. John, I would like to say that, you know, who's ca- who is probably lobbying heavily behind the scenes to stop, you know, the growth of cryptocurrency exchanges are our traditional exchanges here. They don't want to lose, you know, New York status as like the preferred destination to raise capital. So, Whatever. They don't want, and Wall Street doesn't want to lose it to anybody, regardless of where they are. They, you know, the Nasdaq wants to keep it. New York Stock Exchange wants to keep it. So they're saying to the regulators, like, you've got to be on top of, like, anything that looks like an IPO that's happening at a cryptocurrency exchange, which is why we're not doing IEOs in this country. And that's terrible for this country and misguided policy from the people that are lo- lobbying for it, but they're massive lobbying institutions. So do we just not participate in IEOs? ever in this country? Are we gonna just give all that business away to to other countries? Because it's certainly shaping up like that.